Hi, and welcome to today's quick geospatial tip. What we are going to be looking at today is how we can color our contours based on their elevation above sea level, rather than the plain and simple black, brown, red, or maybe even graduated lines that we sometimes see with contours. Now, why would you want to do this? When looking at your contours, there's no real sense of the elevation unless you zoom right in, you take a look at the labels, or if you're on a digital platform, you query those labels. But as soon as we add some color to them, similar to what we are used to with our DTMs and DEMs, it's far simpler to see what elevation those contours might be, what the lay of the land is, low points, high points, etc. Going to be taking a look at how we do this in QGIS and Global Mapper. And of course, the ArcGIS application will be very similar to QGIS. It's quick and it's easy. Let's get into it. So let's begin with the QGIS application. You'll see the QGIS screen open in front of us. And we're going to start by adding a raster layer just so that we get a good understanding of the area we're looking at. So here we are loading up our ortho image. And you might recall this image from some of the previous videos. It's one that we processed through Agisoft some time before. So in QGIS, we select the raster, we add it to our working environment, and then we're able to pan around and see what's going on. So you'll see that this is a, a pretty open area. It's a generally sloping farm. It's actually a dairy farm just down the road from where I live. Not too much going on here in terms of elevation change, but as I say, there's a gradual slope from the north down towards the south, and there are a few ravines surrounding the property as well. The next thing we'll want to do is actually load up the contour lines we already have. And in this video, I'm assuming you know how to use your contour lines, how to produce them, and other factors that go into their production as well. So here we are loading up the contour lines. Remember that is a vector data set. So we add our vector in QGIS to the working environment. And here we see the contours overlaid on top of our ortho image. Straight off, we can see that these are pretty simple lines, just a, a light brown coloring, not too easy to distinguish where the maximum and the minimum elevations might fall. Yes, we can determine the, the shape of the land or the topography by the shape of the contours, but we can't really tell where high is and where low is. So if we right click on our contour lines and we go to properties, you'll see one thing we can do with contours, of course, is turn on our labels. And that's what we're doing over here. We're just activating our labels. And remember, we would want to base the labeling on the elevation property of our contours. So that's what we're doing here. We apply that setting. We're not trying to do anything else fancy, just for illustrative purposes. And there we have the elevation labels on our contours. And now we can get a sense of where the maximum and the minimums are, the lay of the land, etc. But as you can see, when we zoom out, unless we read those labels, it's very difficult to understand those elevations again. So yes, something that is certainly possible, and it is the common practice within cartography, but maybe we can do better. Going back into the properties now of our contour lines, we're going to turn off those labels for the moment, just so that we can see our contour lines themselves a little more clearly. And here in QGIS, we want to go and edit the symbology of the contours. You'll see at the top of the screen, at the moment it's on single symbol. And that's why we're on these simple plain brown lines. So in this, we're going to change that symbology to categorized and again, select the elevation property. Now we want to select the type of color spectrum that we want to display our contours in. For the sake of this video, I'm going to choose the turbo color palette just because it's bright and vibrant, really easy to determine what's going on. The next step, and here's the trick, is to classify each of those contour elevations. So at the bottom, we select classify and automatically we see how each contour interval is classified and displayed in our window. And alongside each, there is a color associated based on that color ramp that we have selected. The only thing left to do is hit the apply button and see the results of the setting we have just changed. And there you have it. Immediately we can see the colors have been applied to the contours and it's really easy now to get a sense of low and high. 
In this instance, the blue color illustrates the lower elevations and the red color the higher elevations. And we can see that general slope from the south up towards the north. If we zoom in again, we can see the vibrant colors that have been applied to these contours as well. And now it's far simpler to get a sense of how the land undulates, the topography that we are dealing with in this case. If we turn the author image on again, it looks so much better now, far easier to decipher what's happening in this environment. Of course, we could now go ahead and apply contour labels, a few other settings, but I'm going to go ahead and just export these contours straight into Google Earth. In order to do this, we want to right click on our contour file, select the export function, and then we will begin our export. And an important step is noted now in how we need to change the symbology to feature symbology. Otherwise, it will just export plain dreary lines and it won't maintain these beautiful colors that we've applied. Select save, export the layer, and then we will be able to import it again into Google Earth. And here we have the results. Now in Google Earth, we can see how these contours with all of those colors have been applied and how it so beautifully illustrates the topography of the area that we had surveyed. Google Earth's a fantastic tool where we can pan around, apply the terrain elevations. It's got a good underlying terrain model as well to give us a nice understanding of what's going on. And the visual appeal here is just so much more powerful than if we hadn't applied these elevation colors into our contours as well. So it's a fantastic result not for every single case, but perhaps it's right for you. Now let's take a look at Global Mapper. Adding the elevation colors to contours in Global Mapper isn't quite as easy as in QGIS, but simple nonetheless. So again, we want to add our contour layer. And here in Global Mapper, we'll see the same situation, these drab, dreary lines. Perhaps it even looks a little bit worse in Global Mapper than what we saw in QGIS. Right click on your file and go to Options. The first thing we want to do is just turn off the labels again, just so that we get a good, clean presentation of those contour lines before we go ahead and start adding any color attribution. Here in the line styles, you'll see the setting we want to apply here, and that is apply the styling based on the attribute values. So that's the third bullet point we're going to select. Of course, the same as in QGIS, we're going to choose the elevation as the attribute that we want to base our color application on. Then we select load values, accept the first prompt, that's just the differentiation between major and minor contours, and the second prompt here is important. Let's select yes for the moment, otherwise it will give us every single contour elevation, and for now we only want the minimum and maximum as well as the average values. If we just hit the apply button, we'll see that Global Mapper has already applied some sort of color scaling, but it's not nearly as presentable as what we had in QGIS. So we select the lowest value, we want to edit that color, and we'll use the same spectrum as what we did in QGIS. So for the low value, we're going to target a blue color, and for the highest value, a red color. We'll also need to set an intermediary color, just so that Global Mapper knows the scaling of coloring that we want to apply. In this case, I will only select the minimum and maximum values first, that is blue and red, leaving the intermediate value alone for now. And we'll see the difference that makes when that setting is finally applied. I'm actually going to remove the average or the intermediary value in this case, just to show you the result. And you'll see with the settings applied, we do have that scaling from red down towards blue at the bottom again, but not nearly as visually appealing as what we had in, had in QGIS. I'm going to replace that intermediary value and edit its color to be a yellow to green shade. And when we apply that, we start to see something that begins to resemble that beautiful turbo color spectrum that we had when we ran this process through QGIS. Not quite as attractive perhaps, so we'll also want to edit those colors later on, but there immediately we're starting to see that same color spectrum, something representative on what we just saw within Google Earth. So we can go ahead and edit or tweak our colors now, 
just to make it exactly what we want it to be. Again, in this case, I'm just using this red to blue color spectrum change. You're able to select whatever color ramp that your heart desires or that your project requires as well. And once we've edited all these colors, we'll see that it, it really starts to represent what we are targeting in our project and something that we would be happy to plot out at the end of the day. And there you have it, another beautiful result that can be exported. In this case, I'm going to rerun that setting to load values. And this time I will allow it to apply all those values to the color ramp. And here we have them, the maximum spread of colors is applied again. Hitting the apply button now doesn't make any change to the data itself, but it gives us more options in terms of color editing, especially if we want to target a specific contour. And there you have it. That is the approach that we can apply in two different software packages to color our contours based on their elevation. Again, we go back to our Google Earth platform. We have a look at what we've created, a really fantastic result, something visually appealing, not for everyone and not suitable to every case or every project, but it has wide applicability and it's something your clients are sure to love. Thanks very much. Thanks for watching the video. Please be sure to like and subscribe. It really does help us. We're trying to put out more of these tip videos every week.